Hello students, Sacred Heart High School welcomes you. Today we are going to study Science Chapter 7, Motion, Force and Work. In previous chapters, we have studied that when force is applied, changes occur in an object which is in motion and also can change the shape of any object. Distance and Displacement let us study distance and displacement with the help of an activity. Ranjit's house is at place A. The figure given on the screen shows the distance traversed or travelled by Ranjit to reach his school at D. Ranjit travelled to school without taking any direction into account. So, the distance traversed or travelled by Ranjit is AB plus BC plus CD. Distance is the length of the route actually traversed by a moving body irrespective of the direction. Distance is a scalar quantity. If you see the picture, Ranjit could also have travelled the school directly from A to D in a straight line. AD is the minimum distance along a straight line from Ranjit's house to the school. The minimum distance traversed by a moving body in one direction from the original point to reach the final point is called displacement. In displacement, both distance and direction are taken into account. Therefore, displacement is a vector quantity. The unit of measurement of distance and displacement is the meter. In the SI as well as in the MKS system of measurement. Speed and Velocity Speed is the distance travelled per unit time. Formula of speed is distance travelled upon time required to travel the distance. Velocity Velocity is the distance traversed by a body in a specific direction in unit time. The velocity of a body can be calculated by the formula velocity is equal to displacement upon period of time required for the displacement. Velocity is a vector quantity whereas speed is a scalar quantity. Velocity measures motion starting in one place and heading towards other place. The unit of speed or velocity is meter per second. Let us now calculate Ranjit's velocity and speed when he goes to school. The actual distance traversed by Ranjit to go from A to B is 500 meters, from B to C 700 meters and from C to D 300 meters. The total distance traversed by Ranjit from home to school is 1500 meters. The time required for Ranjit to go from A to B is 8 minutes, from B to C 11 minutes and from C to D 6 minutes. Therefore, total time required is 25 minutes. Ranjit's displacement from home to school AD is equal to 1000 meters. Thus, Ranjit's velocity when going from home to school is velocity is equal to displacement upon total time which is 1000 meters upon 25 minutes and the answer is 0 0.66 meters per second. Ranjit's speed while going to school. Speed is equal to distance traversed upon total time. Total distance traversed by Ranjit is 1500 meters and the time required is 25 minutes. Therefore, the answer is 1 meter per second. Ranjit did not take the straight route of minimum distance while going to the school. Therefore, the magnitude or value of his velocity and speed came out to be different. Had Ranjit actually gone by the straight route AD, then the magnitude of his velocity and speed 
would have been the same. Average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Average velocity is the rate at which an object changes its position from one place to another. The velocity of an object can change even while it is moving along a straight line. Let's study an example. Suppose a truck is covering a distance of 40 kilometers from A to D in a straight line. Its displacement will be 40 kilometers. If it requires altogether one hour for this, its average velocity is 40 kilometers per hour. However, if the truck traverses the 10 kilometer distance AB in 10 minutes, BC in 20 minutes and CD in 30 minutes, then velocity for the distance AB in kilometer per hour is velocity is equals to displacement upon time. Therefore, the displacement from A to B is 10 kilometers and the time required for such displacement is 10 minutes. We want to calculate velocity of AB in R. Therefore, we will multiply the 10 minutes into 6. If we are multiplying the denominator by 6, then we also have to multiply the numerator by 6. Therefore, the answer will be 60 kilometers upon 60 minutes. We will convert the 60 minutes into 1 hour. Therefore, velocity for the distance AB in kilometer per hour is 60 kilometers per hour. Similarly, velocity of BC is 30 kilometers per hour and velocity of CD is 40 kilometers per hour. We see that the velocity of the truck is different in different segments of the road AB, BC and CD. However, the average velocity for the entire route AD is 40 km per hour. Instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the velocity of an object at that instant or at that point of time. The instantaneous velocity can be different at different times. Acceleration. In the previous example, the truck covered the distance AB at the velocity of 60 km per hour, BC at 30 km per hour and CD at 40 km per hour. It means that the velocity for the distance CD is greater than the velocity for the distance BC. The time required to change the velocity of the truck from AB to BC and from BC to CD also changes. From the number of seconds required for this change in velocity to take place, the change in velocity per second can be deduced. This is called acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity of an object with respect to time. It is a vector quantity and its unit is meter per second square. Change in velocity of the truck takes place because the truck driver increases or decreases the velocity with the help of an accelerator. You might have seen a toy car that runs on a clockwork spring. When it is released, the toy car moves in a straight line. It will continue moving until and unless the spring winds up. However, if it hits on one side, it changes its direction and keeps on moving. If it collides or bumps onto a wall, it stops. It means that its velocity changes. This happens because the car comes into contact with something external to it. On a football ground, how does the direction of the ball moving in a straight line change? We see some player changing its direction by kicking the ball. When its direction changes, the velocity of the ball changes. That is to say, an acceleration takes place. The interaction that brings about the acceleration is called force. Force acts on a body. 
Let us learn more about force and acceleration. You can do an activity. Take a glass marble and let it roll on a big smooth tabletop. After some time, its velocity will decrease and it will stop. On a carom board too, the carom coin pushed by a striker will move forward some distance and then it will stop. If the coin is pushed after applying talcum powder to the carom board, it will keep moving for a longer time and then come to a stop. What can we learn from this? The velocity of the coin decreases because of the force of friction. Force of friction acts against the motion of the coin and reduces its velocity. If the friction between the carom board and the coin is reduced, the coin keeps moving for a longer time. It would mean that if no force of friction is acting on a moving body, it will keep on moving with a constant velocity. Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest or stationary position remains at rest and an object in motion remains in motion with the same velocity unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced force. It means if an object is resting or if an object is moving, then it will continue to do so until and unless an external force acts on it. This is Newton's first law of motion. Previous standards you have studied that a body is accelerated due to force. Suppose you place the 1 kilogram standard weight on a surface with no friction and pull it with an acceleration of 1 meter per second square. The force applied is called 1 Newton. Force is measured by the acceleration that it produces. Force, displacement and work. In standard 6th chapter work and energy we have studied that when a force is applied work is said to be done. Also the capacity to do work is called energy. Let us see how force, displacement and work are related. Let's do an activity. Take a string and attach it to a wooden block on a table and pass it over a pulley and tie a weight to the string. On applying sufficient weight, the block will be seen to move. Gravitational force acts on the weight and pulls it down. When the weight comes down, the wooden block will move forward. If the block moves forward, we can say that it has been displaced. Due to the displacement, we say that the force has done some work. We know that work done depends on the force and the displacement. Therefore, work done by the force is equal to force applied to the body multiplied by displacement of the body that takes place in the direction of the force. Therefore, work is equal to force into displacement. In the SI system, the unit of work is joule while the unit of force is newton and the unit of displacement is meter. In CGS system, the unit of work is erg. I hope you have understood this lesson. Thank you.